prisoner's screams echoed through the halls of the Crothian battlecruiser. In the dim interrogation chamber, a lone human man was strapped to a cold metal chair, his chest bare and crisscrossed with scars, some old and faded, others fresh and angry from his current ordeal. Overseer Talos entered the chamber, his measured footsteps ringing ominously on the hard floor. The gaunt, pale-skinned Crothian smiled thinly as he approached his captive. It was not a pleasant expression. Talos had long ago sacrificed his birth name to Vakrath, the Krathian god of conquest and domination. In return, he had been granted the ability to glimpse into the minds of those he tortured, provided he inflicted enough agony to pry open their psyches. And oh, how he had made this human suffer. The prisoner was ready now, his defenses cracked, his mind laid bare for Talos to plunder. The Krathian leaders hungered for knowledge of their enemies' abilities. What blessings did the human deities bestow upon their faithful? What profane rituals granted them such power on the battlefield? Talos would rip those secrets from this wretch's broken mind. He reached out a slender finger, tracing it almost gently down the human's bruised cheek. The prisoner flinched, forcing open his one good eye, the other swollen shut. A filthy rag was stuffed in his mouth, muffling any attempts to speak. Talos straightened up, still smiling that unnerving grin as he prepared to invade his captive's thoughts. He let his awareness drift outward, his consciousness probing, seeking the fissures that days of torture had opened in the human psychic defenses. Private Finn stiffened as he felt the interrogator's vile presence worming its way into his head. He had been warned about the Krathian's mind-reading abilities during training, but the theoretical lessons were a paltry defense against the real thing. Though his body was battered and every nerve seared with agony, Finn's mind was still his own. He struggled to focus, throwing up whatever blocks he could to slow the overseer's invasion. The balding instructor's words echoed in his thoughts. No matter how strong your mental discipline, a skilled telepath will find a way into your head. The key is not to keep them out entirely, it's to control what they see. Talos probed deeper, sorting through the scattered images that bubbled to the surface of the human's mind. There was something about a lecture, warnings about enemy psychics and the importance of resistance. So the human military was aware of Krathian abilities, but it seemed that they had little defense. Interesting. He pushed harder, tearing through layers of memory, searching for any scrap of intelligence. The human had some minor psychic resistance training, but he was no match for a fully-fledged overseer. This soldier's mind would yield its secrets like a ripe fruit, gritting his teeth against the sickening sensation of the alien presence writhing through his mind. Finn tried to remember his training, to steer his thoughts away from anything vital. He focused on fragments of a long-ago academy seminar, letting those memories float to the surface while he shoved others down into the depths of his subconscious. The interrogator seized upon an image of an elderly, wheelchair-bound man addressing a crowd of cadets. There are a number of psionic bloodlines among humanity, the man said, descendants of those touched by the mother herself, but they're few and far between compared to the Krathians. Intel suggests they've deliberately bred themselves for psychic potential. Talos paused, considering this new tidbit of information. The humans had some natural mind readers, but they were rare, implying their gods were selective in granting such abilities. He filed that away and pressed on, hungry for more. The captive's thoughts turned to matters of faith and worship. It seemed this soldier was not particularly devout to the disapproval of his mother. He attended services for some maternal deity out of obligation more than belief. Frowning, Talos dug deeper still, seeking evidence of divine blessings or unholy pacts. But try as he might, he found only the barest scraps, vague mentions of entities called the mother or the giver, but no names of specific deities. It was as if the information had been scoured from the man's mind. Growing frustrated, the overseer redoubled his assault, tearing into the fundament of the human psyche with reckless abandon. Private Finn screamed around his gag, back arching against his bonds as he felt his very soul flayed open. But there was nothing he could do besides endure the violation. Talos was baffled. By all rights, this man's soul should have been riddled with evidence of divine meddling. A human soldier with psychic potential to rival a Krathian commander? Impossible, unless his mind had been directly touched by a deity. Yet Talos could find no trace of such influence, 
No scars or alterations. If anything, the human soul seemed to actively resist his probing. The overseer pried harder, throwing the full force of his will against the soldier's spirit. He tried to cut away a piece for closer examination, but the human's very essence seemed to repel him, inviolable and unbreakable. It flew in the face of everything Talos knew to be true. How could a mortal soul stand against an overseer's power? As Talos struggled to penetrate deeper, he felt something shift. The interrogation chamber fell away, replaced by a sun-dappled forest glade. Birdsong echoed through the trees, and the air was rich with the scent of loam. At the center of the clearing stood a human woman, willowy and beautiful, her long golden hair cascading down her back. The overseer froze, suddenly uncertain. This felt like the visions he experienced when he first gave his true name to Volkrath, but no Krathian deity would ever appear in human form. He took a hesitant step forward, dread warring with wonder in his heart. As Talos drew closer, he saw eternity swirling in the depths of the woman's eyes, and he understood that this was no mere mortal. He beheld the essence of a god wearing human flesh, an impossibility that shook him to his core. He tried to retreat, but his limbs were snared by vines that burst from the soil to twine around his legs. The overseer thrashed against his bonds, but they held him fast. He could only watch as the goddess approached, sorrow etched upon her ageless face. I am Eva, she said, her voice resonant with power. The sound of her name pulsed through Talos like a physical thing, leaving him breathless and weak in its wake. You are a scion of Vakrath, the deity of conquest, and your kind have declared my children abominations to be scoured from creation. Talos could not even muster the will to speak, but the goddess seemed to pluck the confirmation from his mind with insulting ease. He remembered the day the Krathian Emperor had assembled his overseers to declare a holy war against humanity, the culmination of deific visions and oracular pronouncements. At the time, he had been filled with righteous purpose. But now, confronted by the human goddess herself, a seed of doubt crept into his heart. Ava circled him slowly, her bare feet making no sound on the forest floor. I abhor violence in all its forms, she said at last, her voice heavy with ancient grief. I am the mother of life, the embodiment of growth and renewal. That is my nature and my purview. She turned her gaze on Talos then, and he saw the weight of a billion lifetimes swirling in those fathomless eyes. Even before my children left the cradle of their birth, they were well versed in the arts of war, the mother continued. They crafted terrible weapons and turned them upon each other in orgies of blood and flame. My younger children tore each other to pieces destroying themselves before they could rise into true divinity. They would have driven themselves to extinction if I had not intervened. The glade rippled around them, and suddenly Talos beheld visions of death and ruination on an unimaginable scale. Cities reduced to cinders, forests blasted to ash, the bones of would-be gods crumbling to dust on blood-soaked battlefields. He watched the mother fall to her knees amid the desolation tears flowing down her face as she begged the human survivors to end their self-destructive madness. I gifted them the secret of traveling between the stars, Eva said, banishing the horrific images with a wave of her hand, in the hopes that the vastness of the cosmos might sate their hunger for conquest. I pled with them to venture out into the galaxy and simply live, to become caretakers instead of destroyers. For a time, I even dared to dream they might outgrow their violent past. The goddess turned her back on Talos, her narrow shoulders slumped beneath the weight of her sorrow. As you can see, I am unlike your cruel masters. I do not brand my followers' souls with blessings of blood and fire. Even thinking of humans as my followers feels wrong. They are my children first and foremost, not faithful servants to be exploited. Talos could not deny the truth in her words, blasphemous though they seemed to his ears. The Krathian gods saw their progeny as tools, weapons to be honed and expended in the pursuit of divine glory. What need had they for love or compassion? The strongest Krathians hoped only to be found worthy, their souls fed to the gods and reforged into the next generation of conquerors. Talos himself bore the reforged soul of an overseer who had died in glorious battle. He had once seen it as the highest of honors, but now he felt only a sense of hollowness. Eva let out a weary sigh, turning to face the overseer once more. In the depths of her eyes, he saw an ocean of grief. 
but beneath that, a fathomless, terrifying rage waiting to be unleashed. The sight of it sent icy tendrils of fear worming through his gut. Because I am the mother of life, she said, each word hard and sharp as a blade. I cannot grant my children the same blessings of conquest and ruin that your gods so eagerly bestow. But I have given each and every one of them a tiny seed of my own essence, a sliver of divine potential locked within their souls. It renders them inviolable to outside influence, and it gives them the capacity to become so much more than what they are. The way she said those last words made them hang in the air, echoing in Talos' mind like peals of thunder. He looked into the goddess's eyes and saw the future writ large, a vision of humanity ascending to heights undreamed of, remaking themselves in the cosmos entire through the strength of their indomitable will. It was magnificent and terrifying in equal measure. I knew the risk when I bestowed this gift, Eva continued, her voice hard and cold. I knew what my children might become, unfettered by divine whim and control. But your masters forced my hand when they declared their crusade. You have sown the seeds of your own destruction. The vines tightened around Talos, thorns biting deep into his flesh and his very soul. He felt himself being unmade, torn apart piece by piece to scatter like ashes on the solar wind. The pain was unlike anything he had ever known, but it paled in comparison to the horror of his last sight before oblivion took him. The mother of life, her eyes blazing like newborn suns, wielding the full dreadful wrath of her children's unleashed potential. Take this as a cold comfort in your final moments, the goddess said as the darkness closed in. Your species will endure after a fashion, but the same cannot be said for your wicked gods. They will be broken by the power of a vengeful humanity and their names will be naught but dust on the cosmic winds. And with those words, Talos was no more, his identity unspooling into the hungry void as the human goddess turned her attention back to the war that would unmake galaxies. Light years away from the confrontation between Talos and the Mother of Life, fleets of human warships clashed with Krathian forces across a dozen star systems. Battles raged on planetary surfaces, in asteroid belts, and in the cold depths of interstellar space. Casualties mounted on both sides as the conflict ground on, month after bloody month. On the bridge of the ESS Retribution, Admiral Elena Sato watched the tactical displays with a grim expression. The Krathians were throwing everything they had at her battle group, desperate to break through to the human colony world of New Athens. But Sato had no intention of letting that happen. Bring us about to heading 095, she ordered, her voice calm and controlled despite the chaos of battle. All forward batteries, fire at will. Launch fighter wings Alpha through Delta on strafing runs against their troop transports. The crew leapt to obey, their movements precise and efficient. They were the best of the best, handpicked by Sato for this crucial mission. She knew they would not fail her. As the retribution shuddered beneath a barrage of enemy fire, Sato spared a moment to reflect on the strangeness of this war. The Krathians seemed driven by a fanatical hatred of humanity a burning need to eradicate every trace of her species from the galaxy. But why? What could drive an entire civilization to such genocidal extremes? There were rumors, whispers of dark gods and eldritch pacts, but Sato put little stock in such tales. She had never been a particularly spiritual woman, and the horrors of war had only deepened her skepticism. If there were any gods watching over humanity, they had a funny way of showing their favor. And yet, there were stories from the front lines, tales of soldiers performing impossible feats, of prayers answered in desperate moments. Some even claimed to have seen visions of a golden-haired woman, a figure of radiant beauty and terrible power who appeared to them in their darkest hours. Sato shook her head, banishing such thoughts. She had a battle to win, and daydreaming about divine intervention would not help her in that task. The Krathians were targeting the retribution with renewed fury now recognizing her ship as the linchpin of the human defenses. Shields down to 30%, one of the bridge crew shouted, his voice taut with strain. We can't take much more of this, Admiral. Sato gritted her teeth, her mind racing as she searched for a solution. The Krathians were pressing their advantage, throwing every ship they had at the retribution in a desperate attempt to break through. If they succeeded, New Athens would be defenseless. 
its millions of civilians left to the tender mercies of the enemy. In that moment, something shifted inside Elena Sato. A sense of calm descended over her, a certainty that this was not how her story would end. She felt a presence at her side, a warmth and strength that suffused her very being. In her mind's eye, she saw the golden-haired woman from the stories, her ageless face etched with sorrow and determination. You are my child, the apparition seemed to whisper, her voice echoing in the depths of Sato's soul. You carry my spark within you, the divine potential of all humanity. In this darkest hour, I call upon you to unleash that power, to become the weapon your people need. Admiral Sato closed her eyes, feeling the weight of an entire species' hopes and fears settling on her shoulders. She took a deep breath, reaching deep within herself to grasp the sliver of divinity that had always been there, waiting to be awakened. When she opened her eyes again, they blazed with golden light. She felt the boundaries of her mortal form unraveling, her consciousness expanding to encompass the entire battle raging around her. In that moment, she was no longer merely Elena Sato. She was the wrath of humanity made manifest, a goddess of war born in the crucible of desperation and defiance. The retribution began to change, its metal hull rippling and flowing like quicksilver. Gun batteries merged and grew, morphing into weapons of unimaginable power. The ship's engines flared with the brilliance of captured stars, propelling the craft forward at impossible speeds. The Krathians, who moments before had been on the verge of triumph, could only watch in horror as the retribution plowed through their ranks, an unstoppable juggernaut of divine retribution. Their weapons fire splashed harmlessly against the ship's shimmering hull, as if the vessel was cloaked in the mother's own inviolable essence. Admiral Sato stood at the center of the bridge, her form blazing with golden radiance. She reached out with her expanded awareness, touching the minds of her crew, the pilots of the fighters, even the civilians huddled in terror on the surface of New Athens. In that instant, they were all one, a single unified force guided by the will of a newborn goddess of war. Under Sato's direction, the human fleet moved with perfect coordination, tearing through the Krathian forces like a scythe through wheat. Enemy ships shattered and burned under the onslaught, their crews barely having time to scream before oblivion claimed them. It was less a battle than a rout, a wholesale slaughter of the Krathian aggressors. In mere hours, the once mighty enemy armada was reduced to drifting wreckage and fading embers. The siege of New Athens was broken, and word of the miraculous victory spread like wildfire through the human ranks. In the aftermath of the battle, Admiral Sato stood on the bridge of the retribution, her form returned to its mortal dimensions. She felt drained, empty, as if some vital part of her had been torn away when she released her divine potential. But beneath the exhaustion, there was a sense of grim satisfaction. She had saved her people, if only for a little while. She knew this was only the beginning. The Krathians would return, driven by the implacable will of their dark gods, and she could feel other sparks igniting across the stars, other humans awakening to their hidden potential in the face of annihilation. The war was far from over, but in that moment, Admiral Elena Sato allowed herself a small smile. The mother of life had chosen her children, and they would not go quietly into the night. They would rage against the dying of the light. They would fight with every scrap of strength and cunning and divine fury they possessed. And in the end, they would triumph, or they would make the universe tremble with their passing. For they were humanity, the children of the mother, the inheritors of the stars. And they would not be denied their birthright by any force in creation, mortal or divine. The galaxy would learn to tremble at their passing, and the gods themselves would come to fear the wrath of the awakened.